All right, so now that we've talked about how to calculate heating degree days and cooling degree days by hand, we're going to look at how to do it in Excel. So this is the example I gave you with the hourly data in um, PowerPoint. So now we're going to do it in, um, I'm going to show you how to do this in Excel. And I'm going to do this with this sort of template I set up here. And I'll, and I'll show you why I have all, all these things as we go through. One thing to point out here is I have the base down here um, at 65, but I want to, I can, what I'm going to do is make this Excel sheet. So if I change this base, it's going to change um, my calculation for heating degree days and cooling degree days. So the first thing I'm going to do is start with heating degree days. So heating degree days, if we remember correctly, equals the base minus the outside temperature divided by 24. Now, I should just be able to drag this down, but hopefully you see an error when I do this. It's not readily apparent by the values of what's going on here. But if we look here, it's B13 minus B3, which is exactly what we want. The next one is B14 minus B4. I want the B4 to change because I want it to keep going down here, but I want the B13 to stay the same. And you should remember from your Excel um, training that we want to make this absolute reference. And how we make something absolute reference is we put dollar signs on either side of it, but the easy way to do this, if we just go between the number and the letter and hit F4, it'll do that for us. So you, all I did was hit F4. And F4 will toggle through the different sort, sorts of absolute references. So then we can hit Enter once we have the correct absolute reference. And so now that's our heating degree days. Now, this is non-corrected because remember, heating degree days are not supposed to be negative. So that's why I have non-corrected here, because we haven't corrected for the negative. So now let's do the cooling degree days. So remember, it's the same exact formula, except now we're doing the average outside ambient temperature minus the base. And this time I'm going to be a little more smart and do the F4 right away. And then we divide by 24, so same thing. So now we can see that when we have a lot of negative cooling degree days now and we have some negative heating degree days. So I'm going to show you two different methods to um, correct this. So we're really looking for the total cooling degree days and heating degree days, so we're looking for the sum of these two values. So in method one, what I'm going to do is just show you how to use some ifs to um, calculate the heating degree days and cooling degree days. So for cooling degree days, remember the sum range, this is the sum range. The criteria range we're looking for is actually the same thing, because we want this we want this, these cooling degree days to be positive. So, um, so that's our criteria range. And then we want them to be greater than or equal to, or I'm sorry, greater than zero. Because if they're equal to zero, then. Uh, so we want to sum if they're greater than zero. And if we do that, we get 0.458333. So we'll do the same. So let me show you that formula um, a little bit zoomed in here. So remember it's the sum range so we're summing cooling degree days the criteria range in this case the criteria is the cooling degree days and we want the criteria to be greater than or equal or greater than zero so that's our criteria is in quotation marks okay so that's that's what that is so what i'm going to do actually here is instead of redoing this for heating degree days i'm going to copy so control c to copy and then we're going to double click on the heating degree days and go into the formula and paste. So the only thing we need to change here is the D to C's because we're, now we're doing cooling degree days. I'm sorry, now we're doing heating degree days instead of cooling degree days. So if we change the D to the C in all cases, that's going to make that happen. Okay, so that's just that that's sort of the easy method or the quick method to do this. But it's not necessarily the most um, intuitive. The sum ifs isn't always the greatest. So let me show you sort of longer way that you can do if you like. It doesn't, you, you do however you like it. So that was method one. Method two, what we're going to do is use if formulas. So we're going to um, basically do an if statement. And for heating degree days, if C3 is greater than zero, then make it C3. Otherwise, make it zero. So let's look at that formula a little more in depth. And let me make it so it's easier to see. 
So what this is saying is that if this heating degree day is greater than zero, just make it itself. But if it's not, make it zero. So that just means if it's less than zero, make it zero. So let's look and when we drag down. So that's what happens to the last two values here. So we're going to do the same thing for cooling degree days. And what's nice is that if we just drag this over, if we look at the formula, it just replaced, because since we drag it one over, it just replaced C with D. So it's the same formula for cooling degree days. So now we see that that's what's going on here. So now all we have to do for cooling degree days is not a sum if, but just a sum, because we already took care of the if statement up top. So we can see we get the same results. So that's what's going on, what's going on there. So we can see right away, um, you know, that this method is how we, um, that both of these methods work. Okay. So the only difference um, when we have the non-hourly, and I'm going to leave these, these, this up to you, but the only difference is we need to have a time interval. So if we look at this different time interval, um, instead of using the hours, um, we have 0.5 minus zero. So that just means it's 0.5 hours, right? So that, so if we remember correctly, and I'll do the heating degree days for you. If we remember correctly, what it's going to be is it's for the heating degree days, it's going to be the base. Oops, let's do this. The base, remember we want to make that absolute reference, minus the outside temperature divided by 24. And then the only difference is that we multiply by the time interval in hours. And so that's how we get the heating degree days. And again, it's non-corrected here. So we can see that, that that's sort of the only difference. And then we just do the same thing for cooling degree days, except we switch um, the order of the base and the average outside temperature. Do the same thing with HDD and CDD. And, and the two methods will still work here. So we went over two sort of hypothetical number situations and with just a few hours. So now what we're going to do is go over not hypothetical, but go over actual data for Wilmington, Delaware. And there's a bunch of places where you can get weather data, but um, this is this is one weather data I got off of Mathematica. So what I want to look, what I want to show, is this sort of area right here. So let's look, let's zoom in a little bit on here, and look. So first off, we have the base for the balance point temperature right now is 65 degrees. So again, you want to make sure that if you change this, your heating degree days and cooling degree days change. And then the time and date. So this starts back in 2007 and ends at the end of 2012. So there's a lot of temperature readings here. So um, so that's helpful. I also did some formulas just so you, if you needed this, the month, the day, the hour, the minute, and the year here too. So just in case you wanted th those, um, I did some formulas to grab you that. Now this is the temperature in Celsius. I'm going to leave a lot of this up to you guys to do for homework. But here's the temperature in Fahrenheit. So you can do that, um, do a simple unit conversion to get that. But I want to show you something that's a little quirky in Excel. Um, I want to show you the hours since the last measurement. So it turns out the hours since the last measurement, first off, the first, the first thing we're going to do is zero, because we don't know how many hours since the last measurement for the first measurement. So basically, we're going to not worry about the first um, the first hour of the year, or the first hour here, because we don't know the hour since the last measurement. So now what we're going to do is Excel, you can subtract dates. And it's really nice. So let me show you. If we can subtract this date minus that date. So what turns out is that it's a little counterintuitive, and you probably don't know what the 0 0.0416667 is. But what it turns out is that when you subtract dates, Excel gives you a decimal of how many days has gone by. So if we multiply this times 24, that means, just think about it, we're converting days to hours. So if one day goes by, 24 hours goes by. So that that is one hour. And we can see that because it's 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. So why I'm worrying about this is if we extend this all the way down, we can see sometimes these temp these things, if we see from here, 9 p.m. to 6 p.m., sometimes it's a long temperature, or sometimes it's a long um, time range. So 
So that's why we have to do this hour since last measurement. So what you guys are going to do, um, generate for homework, and I'll ask you um, some questions about this on Blackboard, is you're going to calculate um, up here, you're going to put some formulas in, some sum ifs or um, just some sums, depending on how you do it. You're going to calculate the heating degree days and cooling degree days using the base in G1. And then you're going to manually input those numbers, um, and you can do copy and paste values if you want um, into here for both 2007, 2008, and 2009 with a base of 65 and with a base of 40. Now be really careful with these with these numbers, what you want to make sure of is that you do not make them formulas. Because if you make them formulas, whenever you change the base in G1, that's going to change what these numbers are. So you want to make sure that they're not formulas. So that's um, all I'm going to tell you for this, and, and this this will be your homework assignment, but it's not only going to be your homework assignment, it's going to really help you with your um, adjusted baseline um, part of the project.